Okay, I want to document for myself how to make a 3D scene using QGIS. Uh, in this case, I'm going to start out with a uh, DEM, an image as a GeoTIFF, and a map as a KML. Uh, it doesn't really matter where the DEM comes from. Uh, in uh, a couple of example uh, cases, I've used um, PDAL and LiDAR data to create a GeoTIF. Uh, that works out fine. Uh, in this case I wanted to come straight from a uh, triangulated tin and um, so I uh, used the CAD software to output an ASCII DEM. Um, this is in ARC ASCII grid format and then I'm going to use uh, GDAL Translate to go from the DEM.ASC to the DEM.TIFF. Um, QJS will read in the ASCII file, but uh, this does not have any kind of projection information, and so you've got to go through and set all the projections and the, uh, uh, the reference system. So um, in this case, I just, and, and it seems like the GeoTIFF DEM is a little bit quicker for almost everything. So I'm just going to go ahead and create a GeoTIFF DEM and also when I do that it is going to tell me that this was 1400 units wide. Um, I don't remember exactly what I did when I was creating it. It seems like I used about a two and a half foot uh, GSD. Um, but I'm going to remember this uh, this number 1400 for later. But anyway, so now I've got a, uh, a DEM with the proper uh, projection. So it doesn't really matter what order I do things. I'm going to go ahead and drag the uh, DEM into QGIS. And so we can see that that uh, comes in fine. Um, you know, there's a lot of things I could do um, if I was just, you know, using this. Um, but I can see as I scroll around that the the values, you know, are reporting feet. All the coordinates look good. It's about what I expect. Um, so just so that I have them later, I'm going to go ahead and raster extraction contour. Um, I think I want to use a, let's say a two foot uh, contour. And the thing I like about this is uh, it is going to show me the console. So if I wanted to do this later and possibly, um, you know, upload a DX after a shape file or, or whatever. Um, but this time it's just doing a temporary layer and then it's going to dump the temp layer into the project. So there we've got that. Now we've got contours. Um, I think for later I'll probably want uh, these white and maybe just a little bit thinner because I don't really want them being very prominent on the uh, on the final. So let's just go ahead and do that. Um, I've got my image file in the same projection. So let's just go ahead and drag that in. And um, I think I want to go ahead and have the contours on top overlaying. Um, so in this one, if I remember right, the uh, the DEM is about a two and a half foot GSD. The image is really high resolution. Um, it, it may even be a two tenth uh, foot GSD, um, but you know, there we've got everything that we need there. And I guess while we're here, let's go ahead and uh, bring that map in as well. Uh, this is a KML file, so I'm going to go ahead and drag that in. I'm going to add this as a group so I can turn them on and off as a group. I can also do that individually. Um, but let's go ahead and add these layers. Um, 
and let's put the map above the image under the contours. All right. So now I've got. Um, you know, if I look the I look at the uh, the value tool, it's telling me that you know I've got my elevations. I've got all my different data in that I want. Uh, I can turn on and off individual components. Let's go ahead and just do a 3D view. All right, now for my 3D view, do my Uh, actually, that's not how I did that. I did a view, 3D view, new 3D map. All right. That's why it didn't look like I wanted it to originally. All right, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. Uh, what I've discovered is that I can work with some pretty low resolution um, sort of previews in this screen, but here's the things that are important. I want to go to configure and I want to make sure that the terrain is coming from a raster layer. In this case it's coming from DEM and at this point for what I want to do nothing here really really matters because um, I mean now I've got a 3D view and I can do whatever I want and there are things that I can configure on that screen that are going to give me um, higher resolutions of of almost everything. You know that um, you can see along this edge that uh, it's very low resolution as far as the DEM goes. But I don't really care at this point. I'm just doing you know making sure that everything is 3D, that I've got all the data that I want. And at this point, I am going to export a 3D scene. So let's go ahead and um, select the folder, just uh, documents. Now, uh, here is where I want to go ahead and I could be completely wrong on this, but it seems like if I want a one-to-one -one every pixel in the DEM is represented in the uh, 3D view, I want to make sure that the terrain resolution is set to about the, to the same number. Uh, in this case, I'm set it to 1400 because that's how wide that was. Um, if I change it to 700, it seems like it's about a 50% a reduction. Um, now, so that the terrain resolution has to do with the DEM. The terrain texture has to do with the image. Now, this image is 17,500 uh, wide, but I know that it's 3,500 feet. A one foot GSD resolution in my 3D scene is going to be fine. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, leave that as 3,500, so 1,400, 3,500. Uh, I'm going to add a little bit of uh, exaggeration and I am going to say OK. Now, it's a fairly high resolution and it's going to take a few seconds. Uh, but I can see the first thing that it did was it created the image that it's going to use for uh, draping. So that's there. And it's going. it created the uh, MTL file that um, is just going to specify how the um, uh, how the scene is applied. Now let me see. All right, so this 3D object is um, 357 megabytes. It does open very nicely in uh, Microsoft's 3D viewer. Uh, let's 
may take just a few seconds to open it and render. Uh, and while that's doing that, I'm going to, because I've, I've got another, uh, an online 3D viewer that I'm going to go ahead, uh, this is 3dviewer.net. I'm going to take these and start this upload. Uh, this is going to take a few seconds to read it in because uh, it has to upload that 300 and whatever megabyte file. All right, now if I go back to uh, the Microsoft 3D Viewer, so it's looking at the scene.obj, it's applying the texture, and I can see, let's just go ahead and max this. So everything looks just like I want it to. A nice 3D view. And I can see a nice resolution to that uh, to that surface. A lot of good detail, and it just gives me the opportunity to do a nice walkthrough of the site. So now the exact same thing. It has uploaded to that uh, 3dviewer.net. And so basically just, you know, the exact same thing. Uh, I guess just showing myself that I've got a, you know, it's standard and can be viewed in any 3D viewer that I would choose. Now, let's say, let's go back to um, uh, QGIS. And so here's, here's that 3D view that I have here. Now, let's say that I want to change something. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and close this. And if I go back to view 3D views, that one that I created and everything about it is still there. Now, let me see if I can remember how this works. I'm going to turn the contours off and I'm going to go to View, 3D Views, open up that same one, and the contours are still there because it seems to remember everything that was on in that view. Oh, my QGS ended unexpectedly. Well, that's a bummer. Um, I'm just going to leave this up for a second. And um, the point of that story is, if I want to turn layers on and off, I need to create a new 3D view. But if I change the visual properties of a 3D view, and then go back and reload it again, so for example, if I change the, uh, the colors of the contours, they would get reloaded in their new colors. So the fact that it's on gets remembered. The visual aspects of it get regenerated each time. So then, uh, you know, we can just, uh, if I want to turn layers on and off, then I generate a new 3D view. If I want to change the visual representation, then I can use that same one and it's automatically refreshed. Um, no clue, that really does not happen very often, uh, the way that died like that. And uh, actually, I can't even remember the last time it did. But anyway, that, uh, you know, we created the view, and now all I would have to do is send these three files to somebody. Uh, I actually tried that, uh, sent, the, sent those along and they were able to open those and uh, really liked the ability to walk through the project uh, just as it was.